So in this video, we're going to talk about something that is pretty important when it comes to handling events, and that's event bubbling. So when we add an event listener onto an element, that event moves up the DOM tree. And if it finds a parent element that has a, a listener for that event, it'll fire that as well. So even if we click on the, the button, it'll bubble all the way up to the document. Okay, now that's a little hard to understand with just me explaining it. So let's, I'm going to show you how that works. So let's grab the, the, this button right here in the form. So we'll say const and we'll just call this button and we'll set document dot query selector and I'll just say form and then I want to grab the button in the form. All right, and then I want to add an event listener onto that button. So add event listener and we're going to listen for a click and then we'll just put the function right in here and let's do an alert and say the button was clicked all right so very simple if we click that we get button was clicked now what we're going to do is bring in the parent to that button so if we go to our index html and we look at that button so right here. This was the button that we clicked and the parent to that would be this div, which is the second. It's the second div in the form so we can target it like that. So I'm going to come up here and I'll say const and we'll just call this div and set that to document dot query selector. And let's say in the form we want the second div. So we'll say div and then nth dash child and pass in two. So that'll give us that second div. And then what I'm going to do is add an event listener onto that. So click, we want to click event and then let's just do an alert here. And this time we'll say div, div was clicked. All right, so now what I'm going to do is come over here to just to the right of the button and I'm going to click that because that's the parent it says div was clicked. But uh, now you'll see if I click the button, I get button was clicked. If I click OK, I get div was clicked. So what's happening here is we're firing off this this click event here and then it's bubbling up and then any any of its parents that have a click event listener, it's going to fire that as well. OK, now to Show, demonstrate this even further. Let's bring in the form because the form is apparent to the the but the div. So let's say form and set that to document dot query selector and we'll get the form. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just change that to form and let's say form was clicked. So now if I click on the form, I get form was clicked. If I click on the button, I get button was clicked. It's going to bubble up. Div was clicked. It's going to bubble up. Form was clicked. OK, so we can even go a step further and say document dot body and add an event listener onto that and say click and then we'll say let's do uh, alert and say body was clicked. So now if I click on the button, we get button was clicked, div was clicked, form was clicked, body was clicked. So this pertains to this diagram right here where we click the button and that event is going to bubble up through all of its parents and anything that has a click event on it that will also get fired off. Now, there might be cases where you don't want this to happen because it will just kind of mess your application up. So that's where the stop propagation method comes in, and that's part of the event object. So if we go back up to where we have our button, let's pass in our event object here. And I'm just going to go after the alert and say E dot stop propagation. OK, so now if I come over here and I click the button, we get button was clicked and then nothing happens after that. OK, so event bubbling is is really not that difficult to understand. I know it, it does intimidate a lot of people that are getting started with with uh, JavaScript, 
but it, it's just that it just bubbles up and if you have uh, another click event on a parent that's going to fire off unless you stop propagation now you should only call stop propagation if you have a reason for it uh, for instance if we actually had a parent and child with that uh, with the same event listener don't just call it for the hell of it um, and then there's also a method called stop immediate propagation and this is used if you have multiple handlers on a single event and you want to stop the event for all of them um, but yeah so that's event bubbling now in the next video I want to talk about something called event delegation